Hi apes, today we are going to talk about surface alkalinity and the power of a buffer. So we know that our surface water is on top of bedrock and when we have a limestone bedrock, we have the ability to buffer our surface water. So I wanna show you a little bit about what the chemistry is and what the impact is of an acid uh, on our surface water in a buffered situation and a non-buffered situation. So here I have two solutions uh, with an indicator in it. We can see that we are pretty basic. And I am going to add in my simulated acid rain. My first solution contains just carbonate ions um, in my solution. Um, and so it is not a buffered solution. When I add in my acid, we're hopefully going to see the neutralization of our water. Remember our pH is logarithmic, a factor of 10. So I'm starting to see that blue change and it should happen pretty rapidly. Oh, do you see that flip to red in there? That that acid is there, turning definitely teal, green. Oh, and there we go. I think at this point I can pour in the rest of my acid. All right, so in our non-buffered solution, we did have the ability to neutralize our basic water, um, but because of our acid, um, we went past our point of neutrality and all the way um, into a very acidic solution. So now let's try this again, <clears throat> but in this case, we have a buffered solution. Now in this solution, I still have a same, same starting pH, but I have carbonate ions and bicarbonate ions. Um, and because they are a conjugate acid and base pair, they are able um, to help us resist the pH change. So I have the same amount of acid, same concentration as before, and I'm gonna add it in, and hopefully we'll see a more progressive change as our acid is being buffered by our solution. And again, our change will be slow overall because we have such a concentration of hydroxide ions, very basic solution. At this point, I've added in about a third of my solution. You can see maybe it's going a little blue. So we are definitely neutralizing our alkaline solution, but our buffer is slowing down that pH change as we go. So here we have our two solutions. I've added the same amount of acid to each of our solutions. And now we can see our final pHs that we've gone quite acidic where we weren't buffered. Whereas our buffered solution is still only slightly acidic around a pH of six. That our buffered solution was able to absorb those excess hydrogen ions and resist that pH change. So that's how our surface alkalinity is going to work. That our large bodies of water are often a little bit basic, especially if they have those carbonate ions to draw from and allowing our surface water to be buffered and absorb those excess ions from our acidic rain and overall neutralize our solutions.